Let's derive the Maclaurin series for e to the x. Then we'll evaluate at a point where we can get out an alternating series. And then we'll remind ourselves how we estimate errors using the alternating series test. So, Maclaurin series for f of x equal to e to the x. That means our center. Maclaurin means center is x equals 0. We're going to have our Taylor coefficient formula, a sub k equals k derivative of f evaluated at 0 divided by k factorial. When I get all these terms, we're going to load them into a power series as so. Okay, so in this case, it doesn't matter how many times you take the derivative of e to the x, the answer is always e to the x. So if I put a 0 in here, we're going to have e to the 0, and so the k derivative of f evaluated at 0 is going to be 1 for all k. So we put that into our Taylor coefficient formula, I'm going to wind up with a sub k equals 1 over k factorial. Let's figure out the interval of convergence. So we're going to have ratio test. We're going to take the limit of our n plus first term in the series and put it over the nth term. So the x sub n's, they're going to cancel, leaving me with just an absolute value of x. And then what do we have here? This is 1 over n plus 1 factorial. This is 1 over n factorial, which we can think of as flipping to the top. And so remember, n factorial is product of all numbers from 1 through n. So n plus 1 factorial is going to be product of all numbers 1 through n plus 1. So all the numbers from 1 through n cancel away, and then I'm just going to be left with an n plus 1 in the denominator. We take this limit. x is just going to be a number, so pretend it's 2 or 3 or your favorite number. Point is going to be n plus 1, no matter what number you picked, drives you down to 0. So since this is 0, ratio test just checks, is your answer strictly less than 1? In this case, it will be, and it had no, this was not affected at all by what x that you chose. So it's going to be true for all x. So our domain is going to be all real numbers. So we can use that. I'm going to put minus 1 into this. Since the domain is all real numbers, I'll put minus 1 in there. That's going to give me, let's follow it out. This is 1 minus x. This is going to be x squared over 2. This is going to be x cubed over 3 factorial. So x cubed is minus 1. And then we just keep pushing it out with factorials in the bottom. And then we just alternate the minus signs. Now, this is an alternating series. So the rule for alternating series is going to be, if you want to estimate the error, say if I take the first n terms, so here we're going to take everything up through the 120 for the partial sum. The error is just going to give, be given by a bound from the term that comes after your last term. So in this case, if I want this partial sum, then I can bound the error by 1 over 720. So. I take these first six terms, we add them up, we get 0.3667, rounded. And then the error is going to be less than 1 over 720, which is going to be roughly 0.0014, rounded. Okay, I go to my calculator. e to the minus 1 is going to be 0.3679. So let's see, our bound tells us that our answer is going to be in the interval, we take 0.673667 as the center, and then I add plus or minus 0 0.0014 to that. So let's see what we get. If I subtract it off, we get 0 0.3653. If I add it, I get 0.3681. So you notice our 0 0.3679, which is the real answer, winds up being in our interval. So our guess and our error are going to definitely nail down the actual answer. Okay, with that, well, we're using this as our guess, so we can also use this to get an estimate for e. So all I have to do is take that and flip it over, and that's going to give me 2.727. Okay, the actual value for e is going to be 2.7183. So we see it's not great, but it's not that bad either. We're at least getting the tenths place nailed down.